Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan. I'm Catherine Erdley, your host, as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club, which is my membership group for product businesses. You can find out more at resilientretailclub.com. Today, I am joined by Emily Canino. Emily is the founder of a business called Doodle Moo, and she is joining us today to talk to us about some of the times, and there have been a few, when she's had to be really resilient in her business. Emily, thank you so much for joining me today. It's really great to have you on the podcast. Do you want to kick us off by introducing yourself and your business? Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me. I obviously love your podcast. So So, yeah, so I'm Emily and I'm the founder of Doodlemoo. Doodlemoo is a creative lifestyle brand designing art prints, stationery, home accessories, jewellery, and lots of other bits. And it's all with a fun, bold and colorful aesthetic. It's all designed and produced by me. And I studied graphic design and illustration. So I also do branding and design for other small businesses. And the most very organic, um, a very organic uh, business uh, where I design and create things that I love. So my journey on having my own brand has been one of learning a lot. Learning pretty much how everything about running a business like marketing and I've had to learn everything everything from scratch huh yeah from scratch apart from the design part obviously since I've started I have been featured in the fixers the tv show are ah. uh, in the set in the set of the the program and then we went on to the circle with certain prints they got for the apartments and mm-hmm. then we've been featured in stylist magazine and other magazines and we've also been stocked all over the world in independent brands independent shops sorry and yeah it's been quite a journey and recently I started a podcast as well where I kind of highlight other business journeys other creative business journeys which I'm really enjoying at the moment wow so you have Doodle Moo the brand, Doodle Moo the podcast. Yeah. And uh, wh- and where did the name come from? Uh, well, you know, when I was trying to figure out a, a name for the business, I was like, well, where does it all come from? How does it start? And basically, doodling has been always my thing. I always like make a little doodle, like a little drawing to start off my ideas. You know, even when I'm talking to someone on the phone, I'm always doodling things. And so I thought, okay, I have to use that word, which then I realized I don't say it very well because of my Spanish accent. (laughs) And then I was like working out with my husband, so it wasn't just doodle. And then he said, why not move? And it was kind of like a kind of like a fun element of it. Yeah. At the beginning, I was also doing more prints for kids. Mm -hmm. So it sounded quite playful and fun I guess so that's where the name comes from (laughs) and now another podcast is called the Doodle Moo Show which um, is quite funny the Doodle Moo Show I love that and how long uh, so when did you start the business I think about six years ago but I feel like I've been going for it really you know really strongly that I had more time to dedicate for about four and a half years five years really more dedicated I guess because I have two kids they're now a bit more grown up and they give me a lot of time but before it was a little bit hard at the beginning you know yeah so I was doing it more part-time and then yeah of course I'm always just constantly amazed by people who build businesses around kids because mine were 8 and 13 when I started my business and 
I don't think I could have done it when they were younger. <laughs> I know. It's just, you know, you put a lot on your plate and it's really hard. You always think you can do more than you can actually do because, you know, they either get ill or they need attention. I remember, yeah, trying to do things when they were little. It was uh, really hard. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, you kind of like, I don't know, have some sort of energy for the business as well that you keep going with it. Wonderful. Going back to kind of as you've been growing the business then, what would you say of some of the some of the challenges, I guess, at starting a business up or maybe things that you didn't you didn't know were going to be a challenge when you first started? Yeah, I think, well, obviously money is being quite a challenge because mm. I didn't have a pool of money to start with. It, I think my main, main investment was my printer, my super printer. Mm. And that was at the time quite big for me. And I don't know, I just like, oh God, so many challenges because time to getting known, getting out there with a small budget as well. It's like you have to get so creative as to, you know, learn your own PR, learn to do your own social media, your own marketing, everything. So that's a challenge in itself, just basically mm. learning. Because sometimes, you know, at the beginning when I started, I was a bit like, okay, if I do an amazing design or an amazing print, people will love it and they will buy it. And it's not like that. You have to work really hard <laughs> to get there, to, you know, to get a name out there, to get people to know you and trust you and all of that, those things. But you know how I say about money as well, especially if you have a product business, you have to sometimes create things in a bigger scale in order to work for the price. Do you remember when I made the planners? That was about three years ago. Yeah. I think I needed about five thousand pounds and I didn't have those five thousand pounds in my business at the time. And I was a bit like, well, you know, what do I do now? And I was like, then you have to get creative again. And and then I decided to do the Kickstarter and create them through the Kickstarter campaign, which was to raise the money for them. And I only had like a month to do the whole thing Wow! since I thought about the idea to you know finishing and then be able to produce the planners for that October or November so that I could give them to people before Christmas so yeah so money I guess has been a bit of a challenge but then you find yourself doing things that are also exciting and that you would have never done if you had you know all of that (laughs) No, for sure. So tell me a little bit more about the Kickstarter then. So you so you wanted to create a planner. So it was a creativity planner. Is that right? It's a creativity planner. It's um, a creativity planner, but with so with content. And I wanted to have some images that people could keep and also some quotes. And I wanted it to be all full color. I wanted it to have a really nice cover and, you know, be more like a book that more like a company to people that are working on their on their own and want to have more of a creative life right so then I then I had some activity for every month there was a theme Mm -hmm. and then there was like an activity to do with that thing that I was talking about so for example like getting your goal uh, setting your goals and getting them done or a mindset or you know thinking about reflecting on what you've done so all of the things that kind of like helped me along my business journey I wanted to put in the planner to help other people right but I obviously well I went through the route of self-publishing it and self-doing it and then I had to find the printers and printers are very expensive when it's full color and the pages that have the images and the quotes you can tear it out and then frame it so they were perforated yeah perforated so I had lots of little you know, things. And then I thought about making it in China, but then it was very complicated. You know, I couldn't have had like the samples in time. And it was just, it felt like such a big thing to to send to China. And I didn't have any contacts and things. And I wanted to print it in the UK. Mm -hmm. I found the printer. I found, you know, they told us they could do what we wanted. But then, yeah, it was basically a minimum of 5,000 pounds to be able to print the, the quantity that I needed to make it work price-wise. Got you. But I had everything. I had the design. I had everything. And then I decided to do the Kickstarter campaign, which 
you have to set up a target that you need to reach. But if you don't reach that target, you don't get anything. So it's all or nothing. So I thought, okay, because I don't have a lot of time, I thought I'll do, I'll ask for 3,500. So then if it goes up and if I fill that up and then goes up, then you get the whole amount. So I wanted to make sure that I got at least 3,500 because then I could maybe complete you know? Yes. Yeah. So then, yeah, we, uh, I, my friend helped me make the video and we had about a week or two to say to people that we were, I was going to launch this campaign and wow. then launch it with, uh, I think normally people do a, a month or a month and a half and we did 25 days. Which oh, wow. <laughs> I know. So that was like campaigning every single day for people to you know, give us some money towards it. And then the reward that they get is the planner once it's made. Mm. But, you know, sometimes things can go wrong, like the printing or the timings with the printing and all of that stuff. So it's a a big risk to offer to people, okay, we will be sending them mid-November so that people can have it for presents for Christmas. And, you know, you have like different rewards. You, You have like a prize for one planner, a prize for two planners, and then you give extra things so you have lots of little packages in the in the kickstarter campaign so it was really fun but it was basically talking about it every single day on instagram and on facebook and to all my family and everyone and i even got someone saying you know who's going to give you money for something that you want to make you know but they did yeah they did and we got that i think we got to nearly five thousand in the end <gasps> oh um, fantastic so i was really excited to see it happen and to feel it and then when I knew I was kind of like halfway I, I took a risk and I sent them to be made even though it wasn't quite there but <laughs> I, I had to say that it was going to be <laughs> oh wow it was that's real leap of faith there then so you kind of part way to your goal and then you're like okay I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna send the order to print yeah because then I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had time I think if I hadn't said it halfway of them the campaign I wouldn't have had time to deliver it so I was like okay let's risk it and yeah one thing I've learned about having business and being an entrepreneur is that you have to take risks sometimes yeah yeah as scary as it is sometimes yeah you have to like put it in the balance and say okay well that's it yeah I'm going for it but yeah things like that I mean exactly as you said I I think you took a really creative approach to what could have been a sort of non-starter when you looked at the amount that you needed but you said that, you know, being an entrepreneur is about taking risks. So can you tell us about a time where maybe you did take a risk or made an investment in the business that perhaps didn't work out the way you intended? And how did you get through that? Yeah, well, when, I think one of the biggest investments was uh, with when I tried to work with a marketing agency mm-hmm. to take over my ads and my Facebook ads. Yeah. And I have already been doing it by myself, but I felt like, you know, I felt like I I was missing something and that I I wasn't doing it quite correctly. And, you know, you get all these doubts and fears and things when you're doing it yourself. So this marketing agency was, um, had quite a few businesses, small businesses that they had worked with that they had done really well with their, they had scaled through Facebook ads. Um, you know, they painted a really good picture and we spoke and they said, yeah, we can do this for you. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is the time when I have to invest. And it was quite a lot of money, like a lot for me. <laughs> and was this in 2020? 20, yes. Yeah, so 20, was it 2021? No, summer 2020, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like when we were going through the lockdown, I think. Yeah. Second one, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I started work with them and then it went really bad. I seen like they were the ads weren't performing. It was going worse than I was doing. I was asking why this was happening and there wasn't any answers. And, you know, I got really, really stressed at the time. I was like not even sleeping by the end of it because I was so worried about not only that it was going really badly, but that, you, that, but that I had made a really bad decision. I think you cannot blame yourself because, again, you're taking a risk because you think that's going to do well for your business. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, you have to weigh out the the things, but some, it doesn't always work. So yeah, that was really, really hard to deal with. But Did then, you ever get the answer as to what was happening? No, they never gave a real concise answer. I think because Facebook ads can be so, you know, like, 
changeable and things it depends on many things so they never got me they never gave me a really good answer for it mm. but I expected that if they were um, you know a serious marketing agency they would have made made it work and it was just a complete disaster they went you know we were having meetings all the time and then I had to provide absolutely everything as well I wasn't getting lots of creative ideas from them I felt like the expertise that I was paying for it wasn't there right but then I, I got out of it I got out from the contract and I felt so so glad I did but then I was reflecting on it and I was thinking well I can't really dwell on it and feel guilty about it I just take it like a learning and like a lesson and then I went back I started to do it all myself again and it was working so I was like okay I took it as a like I said like a risk that you then have to learn from and you know it's all a learning at the end of the day with your business and with with you running it it's like it's like if you employed someone or, you know, and it went wrong or you invested in a product that didn't go well. I think it's hard to weigh up. But, yeah, I, I think it's a big lesson on my on my journey. I was going to say, how did you from a I mean, that's a really tough one to bounce back from, because I assume you didn't get any financial comeback. You didn't get any refunds or anything like that. No, nothing. But from like a sort of mental perspective, you said it was very stressful and it was kind of keeping you up at night. How did you sort of shake that off, for want of a better word? How did you kind of move forward? <laughs> I think my husband helped a lot because he was like, OK, Emily, you've done that. You tried it. Let's just I think you have to move on from it and see it as a lesson. And I think I got out of the contract a tiny bit earlier. So at least I didn't keep spending on because you have to spend on them and the ads as well yeah. so it's quite a lot well, so yeah I didn't have any financial but I think I don't know it took me a little while you know to recover from it but again you have to see it as a as a lesson and just say well money is money and sometimes you lose sometimes you gain you know it's a business at the end of the day so you have to keep going and keep lifting yourself up I actually slept really well when the contract finished because I was stressed beforehand. I was like, okay, I'm liberated from this. So sometimes in that sense. And then I was like, okay, I have to work really hard to try and get this back. You know, I kept doing my ads myself. And actually after that, I did quite well. So yeah, lessons you learn and you have to change your mindset and just not, not feel guilty about what something that you've done. And I suppose as well, it, it's probably made you feel like, oh, I, I knew what I was doing with the ads then. Exactly. Also, I feel like sometimes you think that grass is greener on the other side or like, you know, you feel a bit of uh, fear of missing out when someone is telling you uh, we've done so well for this person, we've done so well for this person, but it doesn't sometimes apply right. to, you know, the, to the same other businesses. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I realized that I was actually not doing that badly myself. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you think, you, you know, when you learn things on the go and you're not so sure, sometimes you doubt yourself, but you, you, you know, we have the capacity to do so much. And yeah, so before I work with someone else, it's going to be quite, you know, I'm going to have to measure a lot. Yes, what they can offer for sure. Yes. So unfortunately, this hasn't been the only time that you've had unexpected setbacks. So can you tell us recently about how you have managed to overcome a pretty major setback with your social media? Oh, my God. Yes, this is something that's happened recently. And again, it's a big challenge because I had 27,000 followers on Instagram. It took me a long, long time to grow my Instagram and to get to the point where I was. I had made lots of contacts, you know, and it was, I actually grew that account from zero. I never bought followers. I never did anything. It, and if I remember the first year or two, it was really, really slow. And then I kind of felt like I figured it out and I was, you know, my brand was looking really well there. You know, people say it's not all about the followers, but when you have a big following, you can, maybe announce a new product you have a lot of reach yes and obviously you know you dedicate quite a lot of time to it and then it was taken away about a month and a half ago maybe two months 
it, it disappeared from one day to the other. And then it said it was disabled. What happened was that two weeks before that, I got hacked. And the hacker sent a mass DM to all of my followers with an offer. This offer was obviously their offer and was fake. And then I realized I changed everything on my, I changed my password, I changed my two-factor authentication. So it was sorted out. I apologized for the hacking because some people were sending me messages of like, was that offer true or was it not? Right. And then I thought, okay, I sold it. I thought all was fine. And then two weeks after my account was disabled, and I think it had something to do with that, to that offer that they had sent or the, those DMs. I'm not really sure because you don't get really answers from Instagram. No. So you never got anything from Instagram about what had happened? No, nothing. And I kept contacting them through, they have a way of contacting them when you when your account has to be disabled. And you send them information and they contact you back. But it was never, it never went past the, them asking for more information and then that's it. And I still had a hope that it would come back at some point because some people then tell you, you know, this has happened to me, came back. But I haven't heard anything from it. And so what I decided was to build another one. Mm-hmm. But it obviously hasn't been easy. I mean, I'm still on like 660 or something followers. It's been a big blow and I had a few new items that I wanted to launch and I felt like, you know, I don't have my audience now. And of course, I have my email marketing and other things, but it makes you realize that you shouldn't, you know, put all of your eggs in one basket Mm -hmm. and that things can just disappear from one day to the other. And yeah, you have to, again, get creative on how... And, and all the things that you you put your time and effort in. And recently I decided to do a second sale. And I used to do, you know, my second sale on Instagram. And then I felt like lots of people could see that I was doing the second sale. Yeah. And it was quite good. So, But I decided to do the second sale last week with just my email list and my a small following that I have now. And it actually worked as well. So oh, I felt I saw that. I mean, not as huge, but it's still up there and it's still working. And yeah, I saw that a lot of people that bought have been people that have bought from me already. Yes. So that's when you realize that yeah, your email list is really important. And I wish I had a bigger one because I guess I haven't worked on growing that side. I have a small one, but not huge. But yeah, like also losing the Instagram has been psychologically quite hard, you know, Mm. because it was a big part of my life and a big part of my business that I worked on so hard to get. It's not only that it looked nice and that it was a big following. It was, you know, all the giveaways I did to, to grow, all the connections, all the I'm still looking for some of the people that I was following or that were following me, some people kind of like have discovered me again and gone like, oh my God, where have you been? And <laughs> yeah. And also I kind of lost my energy, like, you know, because the first week I was like, okay, I'll get it back. The second week, okay, I'll get it back. And then the third week when you're realizing it's not coming back. Yeah. I didn't feel the same energy I had or the same love I had for it. And it's only now that it's kind of coming back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Did you find that maybe your most your most uh, loyal followers were the ones who joined the new account? Some, but I think some ha- haven't even, you know how if you, sometimes you're on Instagram and you stop seeing someone, but you don't realize because, yes. it, I don't know, like there's so much on there that people kind of, so yeah, lots of people have reconnected, but I mean, from 27,000 to 600, it's not. No. And and I guess when you get to that point, you also have a lot of dormant yeah. followers, but also people that might have followed you because they're another business and they want to kind of like learn from you or they follow you for different reasons. Not everyone is a potential customer or, you know, there's lots of different reasons why people follow well, you on Instagram, for example. For sure. Yeah, I guess it's going to take a little time because I've only started this new one about two weeks ago well 600 followers in two weeks that's not bad (laughs) well I think I had about 200 because 
It used to be my planner. When I was doing the planner at the very beginning, I created another Instagram account that then I abandoned a little bit. So I, I thought, okay, let's just revamp that one because I already had a bit of following there. So I've gone from, I think I had about 200 there. Well, I think that brings me on to my final question then, which is, so you've talked a lot about the need to be creative, but really to kind of think outside the box, I suppose I'd say, when it comes to challenges like like the financing or the issues with the ads or the, or the issues with Instagram. So what are some of the traits then you think it, it's useful for product business owners to have? Oh, God, I think resilience, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, being adaptable. You know, you have to constantly change and adapt and not comparing yourself to others. I think it's a big, big thing in small businesses. You know, you, I always find that people doing uh, prints, for example, there's lots of businesses making prints and, you know, you have to take and learn from others, but try not to compare yourself, I guess. Pushing yourself a lot. I think mindset is a big, big trade because I think you have to learn to have a a positive mindset when all of these things happen because it's so changeable and so many challenges come along when you run your own business. It's a bit like a roller coaster, I guess. <laughs> sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and you always have to like keep working on that mindset to keep pushing yourself. And I think, yeah, coming to pushing yourself, I love this Bowie quote that says, you know, being slightly out of your depth is where you do the most exciting things. Yeah. So I think always putting yourself in a new new position or in a new scary situation is actually exciting and good for running your own business. And like, for example, me starting my podcast, I was really scared to do that. <laughs> And I was really scared to, you know, I was actually questioning my accent. I was questioning whether I would be good, but I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to try it and do something different. Because you get to that, you always get to those points where you get a little bit bored with what you're doing and you need something new or something different. So yeah, challenge and putting yourself out there in new situations, I think. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you so much. Do you want to finish up by telling everybody where they can find you? Yes, thank you so much. So my website is doodlemoo.com. My new Instagram is doodlemoo underscore official. And the same for the TikTok. And what else? Oh, yeah, TikTok. I'm trying to do TikTok, but not succeeding yet. (laughs) I'm mostly, yeah, on Instagram or emails or on my website. Thank you so much for tuning in. Why not head over to Instagram at Resilient Retail Club and share where you're watching the podcast. I always love to see where people are, where they're tuning in. And also, if you have a moment to rate and review the podcast in iTunes in particular, it's absolutely fantastic and helps so, so much in getting the podcast out to more people. And of course, if you follow or subscribe, then you will be the first to know about each new episode. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month, and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.